talk to you guys about Vagrant. And um, basically what Vagrant does is it lets you set up a virtual machine on your computer. And you can basically set up a development environment that mimics your production environment. And uh, this makes it extremely easy to uh, work with teams who might be using different platforms. And uh, as I'm sure you guys have experienced before, sometimes it can be difficult to coordinate. So why Vagrant? So maybe somebody on your team uses Mac. I know a lot of you guys do. Uh, somebody else uses Windows. Somebody else is on Linux. And I'm sure you guys have all experienced that issue where you're trying to like install dependencies for a project and somebody's able to do it easily while somebody else just struggles the entire time. Um, and that kind of issue, like, you know, it just stalls the project. And it's really not the sort of thing you want to be dealing with as a developer. So what Vagrant lets you do is create a virtual environment. And once you create that environment, you can set it to, be, to mimic your production environment, right? And uh, install all your dependencies directly into that environment using a shell script or a provisioning tool. And then everybody on your team can just download that Vagrant file, run it, and they'll have that same virtual machine on their computer. So when they want to start working, all they got to do is spin up the machine, and they're all set to go. So, and you can put like a bunch of stuff in there. You can start like a database server. You can set up a caching layer. Um, you can set environment variables. You can have everything just good to go, and it will all launch with just a single command. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Um, all right. Oh yeah. So. To install, you have to install Vagrant, obviously. You also have to have VirtualBox, because Vagrant's kind of like a wrapper for VirtualBox. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail about the setup. Uh, if you have like a Mac, you can use Homebrew. Um, it's not too bad. And I'm going to show you guys how to set up a Vagrant machine right now. So. All right, we can all see, right? So all you got to do Whoops. Oh, yeah, that was right. All right. So this init is going to uh, create a vagrant file, right, in my directory. And that vagrant file here. It's going to have some configuration stuff for you to look at. So uh, right now, like the config.vm.box option here, this is uh, the code for an Ubuntu machine, right? Which um, will likely be what your production environment is going to be. So after you've created the Vagrant file, all you have to do to start up your Vagrant and provision your Vagrant machine is just run Vagrant up. And it should just take a second, because uh, right now we're not installing any dependencies. So it's pretty light. Um, all right. So while this is while this is going, let me let me talk a little bit about some of the commands that you can use with Vagrant. So. So to log into your Vagrant machine, you're going to have to secure shell into it. And uh, all you have to do to do that, just right. And that's it. So right now I'm in the virtual machine. Um, all right, yeah. So. 
now you have like a, vi a virtual machine running on your computer, so you can actually check to see what uh, virtual machines are on your computer by just running this command. This is actually a virtual box command. And uh, these things will actually eat up some of your computer's resources. So if you're not like actually doing anything, you can pause it with vagrant suspend, which will, is kind of like putting it to sleep. Um, and if you want to like start it back up again, you can just execute vagrant resume. But you can also just uh, like shut it down, vagrant halt. And um, that's kind of like powering the machine down, but it'll still be on your computer. And you can destroy it, and you can recreate it like really easily. In fact, there's pretty much no consequence to doing this because it won't affect your project files. And uh, you'll find that like when you're setting up your machine, especially if you're installing a bunch of different dependencies, you might want to like destroy and recreate the machine just to make sure that the initial setup goes smoothly. Because when somebody new on your team downloads that Vagrant file and runs uh, the initial Vagrant up, they're going to have to go through that entire process. So let me just destroy that. And um, yeah, when you do suspend, it'll save the current running state of your program, um, uh, while halt will not. Um, yeah. So the last thing to talk about, or not the last thing, but probably one of the more important steps, is provisioning. So provisioning is how you're going to install all your dependencies into the machine, and. Um, Basically, you can do this with shell script, or you can use Chef or Puppet, which are provisioning tools. Um, and it's pretty straightforward. So, all right, let me just. Uh, oh, let me just delete those. All right. So, as you can see here, I have uh, this is a, what a provision script looks like. It's just a shell script, and you can see I'm installing curl. Yeah. So, just a couple things. Um, by default, uh, Vagrant will execute this script uh, as a super user, so you don't have to put in like sudo everywhere. Um, and it's important to put in this little dash Y flag so that you skip any prompts, right? So like, if there's like a prompt that asks you to confirm installing something, it'll halt unless you uh, put that flag in there. So let me just run this real quick because I'm running out of time. So, And uh, in this repo, I just have, I'm installing Node um, and Express. I'm actually NPM installing from package JSON file I have in this directory. Um, and, oh yeah, so another important thing to know when you're setting up your Vagrant machine is uh, if you're running a server inside your Vagrant machine, you won't be able to access that server from the host machine in your browser unless you set up port forwarding, which you can do like this. So what this is uh, basically doing is it's linking the port in the Vagrant machine to the port on the host machine. So port 8000 in the Vagrant machine will be accessible via port 8888 uh, in the browser. So once this is finished, I can go into the machine and I can uh, just launch this express server. And basically, that's, that's about it. Um, I also have, uh, if this finishes in time, I don't think it will, but yeah. So, that's vagrant. <laughs>